So Sherlock's is how old now? It went <laughs> live in mm -hmm. February 2007. Mm -hmm. But I mean, at the time, there wasn't anything like it because now there are similar sites, mm -hmm. but it kind of stands apart. So what made you start it? I was always someone that people used to ask, where did you get that? Mm. So your um, friends were always like, Georgie, their shoes are great, where are they Yeah, from? and I'd go, it's, they're from Henny's, as it was called in those mm. days. And I thought I'd write a book on the best places to buy a white t-shirt. Mm -hmm. And I started researching and I kept stumbling across websites and I had no idea about e-commerce, about online shopping in those days. And nobody did, none of my friends did. And I thought, hang on a minute, mm. there's gotta be a market here for a directory of the best places to shop online. And that's where it came from. So it started with the idea to be like a little black book. Yeah. I was lucky enough to know somebody that worked for Nick Jenkins, founder of Moonpig, and she was oh, wow. um, she was having lunch um, at my parents' house, and she said, "Oh, you should talk to my boss, Nick Jenkins. He's got this greeting cards business." And I just about heard the Moonpig, you know, <laughs> yeah. jingle. And you say Moonpig, I can hear that jingle yeah. in my head. <laughs> and he he was very kind and met me and said, "I actually really like the idea." He said, "You need to think about stickiness." and how you're gonna get people to keep coming back. Because once they've used your directory and discovered Monica Vinader, mm -hmm. how are you gonna get them to come back every time um, they mm. want to go to Monica Vinader? I love that word for describing pulling people back in, stickiness. Yeah. How and, to make and, it sticky. And that's where the content came from. So we launched with the directory and with, I think it was editor's picks then. And, you know, I guess the rest is history. And you've now got so much also really diverse content, everything that's on the website, but then the podcast and a TV series, which no one's done mm. a bit of a fly on the wall mm. magazine TV series. I think it is the best idea and one that I've felt is missing from telly. Oh, but, you know, thank we, you. Well, we're do. on the same page. Well, me too. And, yeah, and I, it's missing. People are nosy and is. people want to know what happens in people's places mm. of work? That's how all of these kind of websites have mm. started because we're all really nosy. Yeah. And it's doing really well, isn't it? It's doing really well. And I'm so proud of what we have created. And, and well, it's, it's interesting because Vogue for the centenary did that one mm, hour, one exactly. off. What everyone loved is being in the office with yeah. them. You know, sitting with the editors and, you know, what do they chat about? What do they eat at their desks? It's yeah. all these silly little things that if you don't work in fashion, you're curious, like yeah. what makes them tick? And I think that's what's so good, is you kind of feel and like actually, you're sat at the desk with the sheer Lux team. Yeah. And that's and, what's so clever. And it's interesting you mentioned Vogue because, you know, you said for all the, all the positive and all the negative feedback, we all watched it. We all talked about it. Mm -hmm. We all wanted more. Yeah, absolutely. So, Let me yeah. in. Yeah. Let me in more. Now, talking about your style, how would you describe it? I suppose it's quite chic. I would say quite simple, others might disagree. Um, probably not that brave. I mean, with Sheer Ducks, we always say, we're not about going first. We're not about being the first to talk about a trend or the first to talk about a restaurant. We'll wait and, you know, is it a good restaurant? Is it something we want to recommend? Sometimes with a trend on Sheer Ducks, we can feature the sock boot before anyone's ready for the sock boot, before it's hit the high street. and. Um, it won't get that great a response, but we wait a little bit and then we're all ready for the sock boot. And they're ready for the sock boot and they want to know where Sheer Lux is buying the sock yeah, boot. Yeah, and I would say the same about <laughs> um, yeah, my fashion. I wouldn't say I'm, I'm someone who's at the forefront and leading the way and wearing the latest trends before anyone else. I kind of like to see how they evolve mm -hmm. and how they become more mainstream. But I, I think my fashion style is quite real and quite accessible. I definitely made a few more mistakes than my friends, but I always think you have to have made the mistakes to really be in it. Yeah, and to see what works for you. Yeah. How do you think your husband would describe it? Just playing off what I spoke to your team about on the podcast, um, which I will post a link to. Yeah, and can I just say how yeah. brilliant it was to have you in the podcast? Thank you for having me. And I how could stay there you were. for hours. Well, I, was, I, really I wasn't could in have. it, which was really nice. <laughs> um, and it's, it's lovely to hear it as a listener would hear it and be entertained. Mm. And I was really entertained. Oh, so Thank yeah, you. you were a natural. Thank you. And um, the well, one thing that we talked about was 
you know, our partners, do we dress them? Mm -hmm. Do we influence what they buy? Um, and that just made me think, your husband, how would he describe your style? He must be a very stylish man. He, oh, I don't know. He's got better. <laughs> He's got better as the years have gone on. Yeah. But haven't we all? I mean, God, I made some oh my God. hum dingers. Um, but I luckily, it's not so documented now. Yeah. Like my, yes. my uh, many fashion faux pas are kind of just imprinted pictures in drawers in my mum's house. Whereas now people, this you know, everything's true. like hashtag today I'm wearing forever. This As is teenagers, it's out it's terrifying. There. Be careful, teenagers. Yeah, be yeah. careful, teenagers. <laughs> Um, um, what would he say about my style? He would probably say, I don't know. He he's a. If my husband could choose what I was going to wear all day, I would be in you know nine inch stilettos, a really short skirt, mm -hmm. something really tiny. I mm -hmm. mean, he's a kind of red blooded male, um, and I can put on the nicest outfit in my wardrobe with a pair of flat shoes and I'll walk down the stairs, I'll get nothing. I can put on an average yeah. outfit and a pair of killer heels and he'll be like, you look yeah. hot. So, you know, he's he's quite predictable in that sense. Mm -hmm. I think he'd say I have good style and yeah, I think he likes the way I dress. Yeah, he, I he think that sounds like most kind of red-blooded heterosexual men, isn't yeah. it? It's like when I put on a wide leg trouser and I don't know, a slouchy polar neck and flat shoes. He's like, you just... Yeah. It's also loose. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He, my husband said to me, like, I'm like, are you yeah, ever going to wear skinny that's... jeans again? And I was like, just let's not even go there with a the denim yeah. chat. You're not going to win this battle. Yeah, so. you're not part of what I choose when I put it on. Yeah, keep your opinions to yourself. Who is a style inspiration to you? I always remember being really inspired by two of my French bosses. And they both had very simple, effortless style. And I remember looking at one of them and just loving how she wore her trench coat. And I used to look at something in a store and I'd think, is that how she'd wear it? Would she wear that? And that would be my reference. And I actually think as women, it's quite good to have these people you think about. Like if there's a look that you covet or a person that, whose style you want to emulate, I always think, think about that person and would they wear that item? I and definitely do that as well. Do you? Would she wear that? Would she wear a floral skirt? Maybe she's more just a jeans girl. I'm the same. You kind of think, who, who are you loving? And yeah. they almost become a bit of a kind of style shopping totally. voice in your head. Totally. Yeah. So I would definitely say those two French bosses that I had. And then going down the French theme, I mean, someone like Karine Rockfield, I think she's just incredible. And, you know, she's not the youngest woman in fashion, but my God, does she rock it like... Nobody else. No one does a leather pencil skirt like Kareem. No, I mean, mm. and Mira Duma. I think she has amazing style. I've always loved someone like um, Princess Marie Chantal. I think she has great style. Mm. I guess. Or very drawn, elegant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm drawn to people with quite simple mm. style. And what clothes make you feel really good about yourself? I think it depends on the circumstances. I mean, at a party, that's going to be a great dress and amazing heels um, and having had your hair done. Mm -hmm. um, in the office, it would tend to be a blazer. I mean, I think a blazer is just always right in any situation. And whether that's a blazer over a knit and, you know, a pair of relaxed jeans in the office or a blazer and leather trousers and a cami in the evening. To me, the kind of blazer jeans combination or leather blazer combination always works. Um, always looks and feels expensive and cool. Yeah, it does. And they don't it? have to be the most expensive leather trousers or, you know, cashmere and a wool blazer. Variations of, but I do always feel, yeah, like I look. And I think you always look appropriate in a blazer. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you are at school or at work or out for dinner or at a party you know whether it's whether you're wearing it on or over your shoulders or whatever it's over I think I really do think every woman needs a bit of a blazer a great blazer wardrobe. yeah I think as women it's really valuable to know brands fit you well mm. know, know where you can buy good trousers that are always going to fit I think we don't spend enough time buying trousers and I think you know good trousers that fit you 
is the basis of everything. I actually had a new rule this year that for every two things I bought for my top half, I had to buy something for my bottom half. And I've actually stuck to it quite well. I've got really into wide leg trousers recently, but I'm someone who runs the risk of just wearing jeans and jeans and jeans and jeans and jeans. So I think it's really important to know where you can go that's going to give you what you want. And for me, brands, French brands like Sandro, like Marge, other brands that I can go into and I know that I will always, always come out with something that I love.